Hey, this is Taylor with Symmetry, and we help busy people take back control of their lives so they have more time, more energy, and less stress. You know, we've talked about pushing yourself in the gym, really getting after workouts. Uh, it's vitally important. But an often overlooked area is rest and recovery. You know, if you notice that you maybe have some nagging injuries you can't get over, maybe you don't have as much energy as you used to have, or you're just plateauing in your workouts, you're probably not getting enough recovery. Uh, really, it's, we like to look at the equation of stress plus rest equals growth. You've got to put yourself in those difficult situations though, through those hard workouts. That's how we grow and that's how we adapt and become more resilient. But without the stress, without the rest, we're not able to really reap the rewards and take the gains that we could be taking. So three tips that we like to use to help improve uh, recovery with our clients is first off, sleep. Now, sleep is really the number one recovery tool. It is vital. Um, everybody used to go about the frame of, you know, you don't need sleep, you can just sleep when you die, you're working all day long, get four hours of sleep and just go, go, go. And research has just proven to us over the last decade that that is just unsustainable. And that's gonna lead to, for one, long-term health problems. Uh, a study a few years ago came out that seven days of sleep deprivation, I think it was just a week of sleep deprivation, and what they considered as that was less than six hours. A lot of people get less than six hours. It can put you in a pre-diabetic state. So it's pretty amazing with just that little amount of sleep deprivation uh, that you can do those harmful effects to your body. You know, sleep is really where our nervous system recovers. It's where our muscles gain from the workouts we do. It's where our mind processes all the information that we've been learning throughout the day. A couple tips to help improve your sleep. You know, a lot of people either have trouble falling asleep or they can't stay asleep. Uh, so the first one is to turn off all of your electronics before bed, an hour. You know, don't be scrolling through Instagram. Don't be on your phone. Put your phone in another room. Turn off the TV. Try reading a book. Try spending some time with your spouse or partner. You just get those electronics and that stimulus out of the way for about an hour before you go to bed. The next one is getting morning sunlight. This is often overlooked. We really don't think about uh, how important that is, but what morning sunlight and really all you need is about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, I like to take my dogs for a walk to do this. Um, and it helps set your circadian rhythm. It helps put the hormonal processes in the right uh, response to get that mel product, melatonin production when you need it later in the day. So turn off those electronics, get you some morning sunlight. Try that for a week, see how that improves your sleep. Uh, other thing we like is what we call working in. Just as we work out, we must also work in. And we mean by getting some stillness in your day. You know, just taking some time, sitting 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, one of the things you can do is, you know, of course it's symmetry, we like breathing, so box breathing is a great technique you know, we don't want any outside stimulus coming in. We don't want podcast news. Just sitting there, focusing on your breath. And with box breathing, this is a technique that was popularized by the Navy SEALs. You know, if those badasses can use it, I think everybody else can try it out to help calm and center themselves. What you're gonna do is just breathing equally through an inhale, a hold, an exhale, and a hold. Uh, People who are new, I like to have them start with three or four seconds. So you would just be breathing in for three, hold for three, out for three, and hold for three. And just repeating. Start off with five minutes. And see if you can work up to 10. And see how you feel when you get done with that. Uh, we also have some links that you can check out to uh, recorded versions of box breathing if you, if you want a little guidance. Another way of working in is just by going on things like walks, but without any stimulus. No podcast, nothing, just you know, go out in nature, take a stroll, take a hike, uh, just really being alone in some stillness. The next thing is I'm in a sauna, so sauna's ice baths. Those are some of our 
very favorite ways to recover. Uh, they can be extreme stressful situations, the way we use them and heat and ice contrast therapy. And what you'll find is you are gonna feel incredible when you get done. I know a lot of people are scared of heat and ice, but uh, how you feel at the end of it is amazing. And you get this massive rebound of recovery, this recovery response, we call the parasympathetic rebound, a couple hours after it and you start feeling amazing. But you don't need to go full on into heat and ice to gain the benefits. You can just use cold showers, contrasting that with a hot shower. Don't really worry about the time, just worry about focusing on your breath, slowing down your breathing in through the nose, out of the mouth. Think about breathing in for three, pause, out for six. Just slow that exhale down, get your breath under control in the shower before you turn it back to hot. So those are just a few of our favorite recovery methods. Let us know what you think. What, what recovery methods do you like? What do you use? Uh, let us know if you have any questions. Hit us up in the comments. Send us a DM. We'd love to chat. Hope you have a great day.